summer harvest, a tour of the California garden, some things for you to do this month, all this and a lot more coming up in today's episode. So let's begin with the harvest we made this month. Beginning with apples. We had our Dorset golden apple tree. This is actually a part of a four in one apple tree. This tree has four fruit varieties in one tree. And we harvested a couple of apples. These are extremely delicious apples. I think homegrown apples are like in a league of their own when it comes to taste. These apples tasted pretty good and they are extremely easy to grow. Just make sure you get the multi grafted variety so that you can get a lot of fruits. Bottle gourd. Bottle gourds are edible gourds that can be grown easily in your garden during the summer season. These were growing on our trellis between the raised beds. And you can see the plant has grown quite big and it does yield some really big bottle gourds as you see here. Broccoli. We harvested the last of our purple sprouting broccoli. It was getting really hot and the broccoli plant wasn't liking all the heat in the summer. And you can see here the purple sprouting broccoli. The sprouts look quite beautiful. They are purple in color and they are quite delicious. And our plant was just growing in a small container. You can grow this purple sprouting broccoli in containers or raised beds. It's extremely easy to grow them and harvest some fresh broccoli in your home. Brussels sprouts. We had a few Brussels sprouts growing in our garden. This one was growing in a container in a corner and it was really difficult to remove this plant. And you can look at the Brussels sprouts plant here. The Brussels sprouts are produced on the side stems all around the stem as you see here. And it's quite a beautiful pattern that you see. Now the Brussels sprouts plant has a very thick stem. So you need some really strong cutters to cut the stem. And as you see here this plant is loaded with Brussels sprouts. A lot of Brussels sprouts that you can harvest. And that too in a beautiful pattern on the plant. And not only are the Brussels sprouts edible, but you can also eat the tops of the Brussels sprouts just like you would eat cabbage. So you just chop off the top part of the Brussels sprouts stem. And these are the Brussels sprouts. Each can be detached from the main stem. And then you have the top that's just like a cabbage. You can eat these leaves just like you would use cabbage and they taste excellent. And we have one more growing in this container which will be ready for harvest very soon. And this is the other one. It's now ready to harvest these Brussels sprouts. And you can see the plant has grown quite big. The stem is quite thick and it's really hard to cut the bottom of the stem. But you can see how easy it is to grow Brussels sprouts. They grow quite easily in the Southern California weather. And they grow pretty much year round in Southern California. And once again, you look at the Brussels sprouts patterns. It's a beautiful pattern of Brussels sprouts on the stem. And once again, you can use the top just like you would use cabbage. So, all in all, we were very happy with the Brussels sprouts we harvested. Moving on to bush beans. We were growing a few bush bean plants on our raised beds, six of them actually. And you can see here the beans are now ready for harvest and bush beans don't grow like pole beans they don't take up a lot of space but they still produce a lot of beans and they'll produce a lot of beans a few times and then they stop producing so if you look at the bean plant here this is sitting on a raised bed not occupying a lot of space doesn't need any trellising but is still yielding a lot of beans as you see here And beans don't really need any kind of fertilizer or amendments in the soil. The soil that we are using in our raised bed is rich with nutrients and worm castings. 
and beans and other legumes actually fix the nitrogen in the soil. So you don't really need to add any fertilizers or amendments for growing beans. And I love the flavor of bush beans. They are so easy to grow. They give you fresh beans and the taste of fresh beans is quite unique. It's unlike anything you can get from your grocery store. These fresh beans taste just amazing. And here is our first harvest. You can see here lots of beans. And we are not done yet because these bush bean plants will keep producing beans for the next coming days. But as you can see here, beautiful looking harvest. And we are back at harvesting the beans again. It's just been a few days and the bean plant still keeps producing a lot of beans. And you can see how loaded this bush bean plant is. It has produced a lot of bush beans. And although it doesn't have all that space like pole beans, it did produce a lot of beans as you see here. Gorgeous looking beans. And here's our second harvest. As you can see, a lot of beans we harvested in the second round. This was probably one of our biggest harvests. And there are still a few beans on the plant. So we are now ready for round three. And as you can see, these beans are quite good in size. They have grown pretty well. And they have been pretty much insect and disease free as you see. So as long as you have a healthy soil, your plants will grow well and thrive. And here's our bush bean harvest for the third time. And all in all, we were very happy with the way the bush beans grew in our garden. Moving on to carrots. We were growing carrots in our whiskey barrel container. And this is the Imperator variety of carrot. The ones that you find in the grocery store, the most common ones. And they grow very well at home too. And not only do they grow well, they don't take up a lot of space as you see here if you're using a whiskey barrel container. So I love growing carrots at home just because I can eat some fresh carrots right away. I love eating carrots raw or in a salad. They just taste amazing. And the kids love it too. So if you want your kids to be introduced to some healthy vegetables, carrots are a good option because they love carrots. And you can see the carrots are quite decent sized. And not all carrots will be the same size. So you can expect some carrots to be smaller than the other. And it's perfectly normal. But the Imperator carrot variety is one that most gardeners should be able to grow relatively successfully. Because they yield larger sized carrots. 
and they are easy to grow. And in one whiskey barrel container, you can grow a lot of carrots, as you see here. There are probably around 60 to 80 carrots in this whiskey barrel container. And as you see here, the harvest looks beautiful. After washing, these carrots look amazing. And we are not done yet because there are several more carrots in this whiskey barrel container. And this is going to be our final harvest for these carrots. These carrots are extremely sweet. They don't have any kind of bitterness. They taste quite good and they are easy to grow in your home garden. So other than all the other carrot varieties you are growing, this may be something you want to put on your growing list for the next season. And although carrots are a cool season crop, you can plant carrots in spring, which is what we did, and then harvested them in June, in the summer season. And peak summer months in Southern California are July and August, so it's still relatively okay, although the temps have been going up quite a lot in the last few days in June. And looking at the way things are going, I think we're going to have a very hot July and a very hot August. So we'll see how the weather shapes up for the next two months. But you can see here lots of carrots that we harvested. Beautiful looking carrots. And our harvest looks pretty good. As you see here, lots of carrots that we harvested from just one whiskey barrel container. And this is how our harvest looks like. As you can see here, quite good looking carrots. After washing them, these are a lot of carrots to be consumed. But we're very happy that we were able to very productively grow some carrots in our garden. Cilantro. We were growing cilantro around our fruit tree container. And this is a great way to grow cilantro. Now all cilantro do go to bolt due to the heat of the summer season. That's perfectly normal. And you can see our harvest here, it looks quite good. Cilantro is always a challenge to grow in the hot summer months. However, if you plant cilantro in partial shade like we did, you might end up with a decent result. Cucumbers. We were growing these cucumbers in our raised bed. And these puneri cucumbers are very nice for snacking. They are very delicious and they have a very mild taste, which is what I love about these cucumbers. And they're very unique tasting cucumbers. And you can see here once they start maturing, they turn into a slightly darker yellow color, which is why the best time to harvest these cucumbers are when they are light green or yellow not like dark yellow. So these are slightly darker yellow, but these are still perfectly edible. You can still eat them and they taste amazing. Now we also had another cucumber variety that was growing right next to it. And this variety is similar to the Puneri cucumber, but tastes a little different. And as you can see here, it grows quite larger. So back to our cucumbers, the Puneri cucumbers, these look quite good. And you can see here three different stages of cucumbers from two plants. And once again, here is a harvest that has cucumbers that are less mature, which means it's the perfect time to eat them. And the longer you wait, the larger your chances of your cucumbers becoming bitter. So I highly recommend you harvest your cucumbers at the right time and consume them. But all in all, from just these two plants, we got a lot of cucumbers throughout the month of June. And here you can see our harvest of the other cucumber type. It looks quite beautiful. And back to the Puneri cucumbers, one of my favorites for eating this year. I just love this cucumber variety. It tastes quite good. Very unique tasting cucumber. And we got several cucumbers from just these two plants. And we were harvesting cucumbers almost every day from just these two plants. And here you can see another harvest, slightly more mature cucumbers. 
but still perfectly fine. Eggplants. We were growing our millionaire eggplant in a container. And as you can see here, the eggplants are quite good looking. The millionaire eggplant is overwintered from last year. And we harvested quite a few eggplants from this one plant in the container. Moving on to the Indian thorned eggplant, which we were growing not only in containers but also in raised beds. The ones in containers had started producing now. And as you can see here, we are harvesting these eggplants. The thorned eggplant is naturally resistant to insects and diseases. And not only that, it also produces some beautiful looking eggplants as you see here. These eggplants are not only beautiful, they are also quite delicious. The Indian thorned eggplant is one of the unique eggplant varieties that I've eaten. It has a very unique taste, very nice taste. And it also is very prolific. It produces a lot of eggplants. And here you can see our first harvest. And the next harvest we had from these eggplants were from the ones growing in our green stock planter. And the green stock classic planter is very useful in growing plants like eggplants. You see here the plant is yielding quite good quality eggplants. And they look quite good and they are also very delicious. So in a relatively small area like the green stock planter, you can grow this eggplant variety. And coming back to our container, we were getting a lot more harvest from the one growing in the container. So we harvested a few more eggplants. Beautiful looking eggplants as you see here. And now moving on to the raised bed, we had three plants, three of the Indian thorned eggplants. And we started harvesting from our raised beds. You can see here the plant is loaded with eggplants. Quite a lot of eggplants on just these three plants. So as I mentioned, this is a very prolific eggplant variety. It yields a lot of eggplants. You can look at our harvest here. Beautiful looking eggplants. Scary thorns. There are a lot of thorns on this eggplant. So just be careful when harvesting them. But the thorns actually protect the eggplants from crawling insects, which is good to see. For some reason, as I mentioned earlier, the eggplants have a very unique taste, very nice taste. And just look at this harvest. The eggplants look just amazing. And there are several more eggplants here, which we will be harvesting soon. This plant is just loaded with eggplants, all three of them. Hyacinth beans. We were growing the vining type hyacinth beans in a container and we started harvesting the hyacinth beans. Now you want to harvest your hyacinth beans when they are tender. Once they grow very large, they may not taste as good. But we had several growing in this one plant that was growing in this container. It had used up space on the trellis to grow tall and it had reached almost 7 feet in height. And you can see here the beans, they look amazing. This is a very flavorful bean variety. And just as a reminder, you do have to cook these beans before you use them. You can't consume these beans raw. The hyacinth beans must be cooked before eating. And this is a variety of bean that I've loved over the years. Beautiful looking beans and also very delicious. And this plant was so tall that I had to use a ladder to climb up and harvest these beans. And you can see there are a lot more beans coming up on this plant. So we will be busy harvesting these beans for quite some time. Moving on to okra. There were several okra varieties we were growing. This is the jambalaya okra that we were growing on the raised beds. It's quite a prolific okra variety, which we are growing for the first time this year. And you can see the okras, they look quite good. And we were getting a few okras every day from these plants. So although we didn't have a whole lot of plants that were yielding a lot of okras, a few okras every day did add up to quite a few okras over time. And you see here the okras, they look quite good. Very nice tasting okra too. And there were several that we were growing in the raised bed. So every time the okra showed up, we went ahead and harvested it. 
So as you can see, we were getting a few okras every day from these raised beds. We also had some okras in containers. There are four of these okras growing in a 15 gallon container. And they did yield quite a lot of okras as you see here. These okras look quite nice. And we were also growing the red or burgundy okras. Not only in containers but also in raised beds. And here is our harvest. As you can see these okras also look very beautiful. They taste very much like the green okras. But the burgundy color means that it has more antioxidants than the regular green okra. And it tastes just as good. So you can see here mixed colored okras. When you cook them they all become pretty similar. So all in all we were very happy with the okra harvest that we had. Moving on to peppers. We were growing bell peppers in our containers. These are in whiskey barrel containers. We had one growing in this container and then a couple more in another container. You can see here the harvest they are pretty good. And this is the other container. Decent sized green bell peppers. And this is our harvest as you can see here pretty decent bell peppers. And these are the peppers from our raised beds. Now we were growing a lot of pepper varieties in our raised beds. This is the bell pepper. Quite a big sized bell pepper as you can see here. And we harvested quite a lot of these from the plants on the raised bed. Here's one more out of about four plants I think that we planted on the raised beds for the bell peppers. And just look at the quality of these bell peppers they are just amazing. Now one thing to note about getting good bell peppers is to make sure that you feed them with worm tea every 15 days. To make sure that they uptake all the nutrients as expected. And here you can see beautiful looking peppers. This is a different pepper variety. And the harvest looks quite good. Now all these peppers are mild peppers. The long bell peppers as well as the round ones. They are all very mild. However, the Kahoon bell pepper that we are harvesting right now is a little on the spicy side. And it's supposed to be completely red before you harvest it. But I love my peppers when they are green. So I harvest them when they are green. But you can wait for these peppers to turn completely red and then harvest them. But the Kahoon bell pepper is one variety that had a little bit of a kick. It was a little spicy but extremely good tasting pepper and also very prolific. You can see how many peppers this plant is producing. And here's our harvest. Quite beautiful looking peppers. Hot peppers. A little hot. Not too hot though. But very delicious as well. We were growing our early flame jalapenos in our green stock planter. And the early flame jalapeno is very easy to grow in smaller spaces. Which is why we chose to grow it in our green stock planter. And we started harvesting the jalapenos. As you can see beautiful looking jalapenos. Not too hot. I think these jalapenos were a little bit on the milder side. But overall you can see our peppers here. We harvested a lot of pepper varieties. Beautiful looking peppers. And also very fresh and very delicious. Moving on to potatoes. We had our potatoes growing in this 15 gallon container. And these were just a couple of potatoes that we just tossed in and we were waiting for these to mature. So you can expect a few potatoes when you grow potatoes like this. Don't expect a lot of potatoes but just a few would be good too. And this container was just lying in a corner without anything growing in it. So we just decided to toss in a couple of potatoes that were sprouting. And this is what we got.
and these potatoes just grew so quickly that it was good use of the container good use of the space that we had you can see the potatoes here not a huge harvest but still these are fresh organic home grown potatoes pumpkins we were growing a couple of pumpkin varieties on our raised beds this here you can see is supposed to be harvested when it's slightly yellow and i think we got the timing right because this pumpkin tasted very good once this pumpkin turns completely yellow it becomes a little stringy and not so delicious and you can see this pumpkin that was hiding behind this container was a huge harvest it's a big pumpkin that you see here so this is a white pumpkin but leaning towards yellow and it was quite delicious moving on to purple radish we were growing this purple daikon type radish in containers and as you can see here this radish variety doesn't need a lot of space to grow it was growing quite well in the shallow container and it did produce a decent harvest the daikon type radishes will produce bigger sized radishes as you see here and the color also gives them a lot more nutrients than white radish a lot more anthocyanins that are present which is good for your health so just a few radishes from this container but it's also a very small container something that anyone can fit into their home garden napoli squash this was a new squash variety that we were growing in our garden this year and the napoli squash is supposed to produce very huge squashes the squash it produces is slightly larger compared to the regular zucchini squash and this is also a huge plant it takes up a lot of space in your garden but we got a few squashes from this plant and as you can see here good looking squash very similar tasting to zucchini and worth growing in the home garden swiss chard a spinach replacement that can be grown year round in southern california swiss chard grows extremely well both in small containers like this as well as in raised beds or in the ground it grows quite well in most conditions in southern california throughout the year which makes it an excellent alternative to spinach which only grows in the cooler season swiss chard will grow in the heat of the summer season and still give you a lot of leaves that you can harvest then here is another one once again growing in a very shallow container and you can easily grow swiss chard in containers like these and get a decent harvest the first type of swiss chard we harvested is the red swiss chard and we also have the green leaves so make sure that you plant swiss chard that are of different varieties you want a mix of green and red leaves so that you can get the most amount of nutrients from these swiss chard leaves and swiss chard tastes amazing in my opinion it's one of the better tasting greens we cook it with lentils and coconut and spices and it just tastes amazing tomatillos one of my favorites for this season was harvesting tomatillos because they make great tomatillo chutneys and salsa now usually the tomatillos will almost swell up and pop out of their protective cover but you can harvest tomatillos at any time you can see the fruits here being formed inside the husk and the reason we started harvesting these tomatillos was the fact that the santa ana winds came in one day and knocked over one of the branches for this plant so we went ahead and harvested all the tomatillos and as you can see here our harvest looks beautiful and once the husk was removed you can see the tomatillos here beautiful looking tomatillos tomatoes we were growing two tomato varieties in this very shallow container the little sicily and the little bing both of which are great patio tomato varieties that you can grow in small spaces and you can see here we are harvesting a lot of tomatoes from just these two plants the little sicily is a slightly larger tomato variety compared to the little bing which is a cherry type tomato 
But all in all, both these tomato varieties did yield a lot of tomatoes from just a small space. And after one harvest, the plant was ready for another round of harvest. So we did harvest multiple rounds from this tomato plant. So this tomato plant kept on giving for quite some time. And the fact that we grew this in a container that's only 8 inches deep should tell you something that vegetables don't have extremely deep root systems, at least some vegetables. So you can grow these kind of tomatoes very easily in shallow containers. And once again, this is our next harvest, once again looking beautiful. The red pride tomatoes are one of the other tomato varieties that we were very happy about growing this year. These are extremely small tomato plants, almost dwarf tomatoes, but they yield a lot of tomatoes as you can see here. And these are extremely large tomatoes that are easily produced in a container. The red pride tomatoes don't have a very deep root system, so you can easily grow them in containers get a very decent harvest without the plant growing very tall. And even if some of your tomatoes are not red on the vine, they will become red once you store them. And as you see here, beautiful looking red pride tomatoes. And we had a lot more growing in this 15 gallon container in the corner. This in fact was one of the first tomatoes we planted in our garden when the season started. And just look at this plant, it's about 2 feet tall. And just look at how many tomatoes this plant is yielding. It's quite remarkable. Juliet. We were growing the Juliet tomato variety in this pot. And the Juliet tomato is another very prolific tomato variety. It produces grape sized tomatoes. So they're not as small as cherry tomatoes, but they're also not as large as the red pride tomatoes. So somewhere in between. You can see these grape sized tomatoes. Now the Juliet tomato is one tomato variety that is very versatile. You can eat them raw in a salad or you can cook them. And the best part about the Juliet tomato is that it starts producing very early and it keeps producing very late in the season, unlike some other tomato varieties. And here you can look at our first harvest, beautiful looking Juliet tomatoes. And in just a few days, you can see that the plant is once again loaded with tomatoes, quite a lot of tomatoes. And as long as you keep the foliage neat and clean, this plant should be able to give you a lot of tomatoes. And you can see how many tomatoes we have. We just got tired of harvesting these tomatoes almost every day. And as you can see, beautiful looking Juliet tomatoes. And just look at our next harvest. These are a lot of Juliet tomatoes. Beautiful looking tomatoes that we can consume for quite a long time. And finally, zucchini. We were growing this zucchini in one of our fruit tree containers, right next to one of our orange trees. And you can see here, the zucchini that it yielded is quite big, quite large zucchini. And there are a few more growing which we will harvest very soon.
And now let's take a tour of our garden, beginning with the raised beds. Our raised beds have been set up almost two years ago, and you can see here the plants are looking way more green. The soil has been built over time, and the plants are really doing very well. So, in the first raised bed, we have some cowpea plants on the edge. We have some onions, the red onions that are becoming quite large now. We have some eggplants and tomatoes in the center. This particular tomato plant, for some strange reason, has not been giving us a lot of tomatoes and has grown quite tall. We have our pepper plants, a lot of varieties of peppers that are growing, producing almost every day. And we did harvest a lot of peppers from these all throughout the month. You can see here these plants are still producing a lot of peppers and that's great to see. We planted some kohlrabi and some turnips on the side of the raised bed just because we had some space there. But they are not doing that well. These are both cool season crops and won't do that great in the summer season. However, they are just hanging by. So we'll see how these plants grow. We have our indeterminate tomato plants on the side of the raised bed on the trellis. And on the other raised bed, we have our bean plants, the asparagus bean plants that are trying to climb on the trellis. And I'm really looking forward to harvesting these beans in the next month or so. We have a lot of carrots on the side. We have a couple of tomato plants. And the cabbages, the cabbages that we planted in between are not doing that great because this is a time when you see a lot of butterflies in the garden and they lay eggs on these cabbages and the cabbage worms will then start eating those cabbages. We have some cilantro on the corner and two Brussels sprouts and between them there is a potato plant growing. And the Brussels sprouts are growing quite well. They still have some time to go before they mature. And on the next raised bed, we have our okra plants. There are a lot of okra plants, both the green okra as well as the red or burgundy okra. They're all growing very well. And we have this pepper plant, the cayenne pepper plant on the corner. And you can see the bitter gourd plant on the trellis that's growing quite well. And we have some bush bean plants. We harvested a lot of bush beans from these plants as you saw in the harvest section. And then we have some more okra plants. And on the side, we just sowed some hyacinth bean seeds. These are the bush type hyacinth beans. And we'll see if they germinate and grow. We have bottle gourds in the center of the trellis. As you can see here, there's a huge bottle gourd growing. And the plant has also grown quite well, as you see here. So I'm pretty happy with the way the bottle gourd plant has grown this year. And the tomato that was overwintered is now falling onto the raised bed area, the walking path. And a lot of these plants here, the mouse melon, for example, is doing okay, not that great. We also have the Napoli squash that's producing a few squashes and some pumpkin plants. And you can see that they're not doing that well here. The pumpkin needs a lot more space to grow. But I'm still seeing a few pumpkins, so I'm just going to leave these plants as is for now. But if I need to make space for some other plants, I might use some of the space here. The corn plants are also growing quite well. As you can see here, this is a blue corn variety that's producing a lot of cobs now. They should be ready for harvest very soon. And on the final raised bed, we have our thorn eggplants. And as you saw earlier, these are just loaded with eggplants. And they are still loaded with eggplants, a lot of them. So we can expect to harvest a lot of these eggplants throughout the next month as well. And still be left with a lot of eggplants on the plant. And you can see here some more eggplants on the bottom beautiful looking eggplants that this plant is producing. We have the Lab Lab beans plant right next to that. That's also doing okay. 
We haven't started harvesting these yet. The onions on the side are quite big, huge onions here, and they should be maturing very soon. We have more eggplants in the center. These are the white eggplants, white and green eggplants. And finally, we have the okra plants on the right. They're doing quite well. And we have our ivy gourd plant on the trellis on the back. And you can see how vigorously this plant has grown in the last month. It has started occupying almost the whole trellis. And you can see a lot of blooms here that will give us a lot of ivy gourds. So this ivy gourd plant is extremely prolific in the summer season. And you can see here some ivy gourds are already being developed here on the plant. So all in all, the ivy gourd plant grew very well in this season. And that completes the tour of our raised beds. Let's now move to the containers tour. On the side, we have onions or shallots growing in the first container, followed by our galangal plant, which is doing okay. We have our eggplant, and you can see here this eggplant is forming a large fruit here. Next to that, we have a couple of okra plants. This is the long okra variety. And we have some shishito peppers on the side. The first year we are growing them, they are quite nice. It does produce a lot of peppers as you see here. We have another eggplant, the Indian thorned eggplant, followed by our turmeric plant that's now growing quite well. We have the mouse melon plant, which is very similar looking to the ivy gourd, but still a little different. We have some onions, more onions on the last container. And on the other side, we have cabbages growing in this container. We have three cabbage plants and you can see that this space is too little for these plants. We have some turnips growing. They don't like the summer heat at all. We have some peppers in the third container, couple of different pepper varieties. We have our Lab Lab beans plant, which is now growing quite well. And I forgot one eggplant here when harvesting. And on the next pot, we have planted our big kahuna beans. These are bush beans, followed by the snake goat plant, which has this trellis that it can use to climb. We have our tomato plant that's doing okay. Now slowly producing tomatoes. And we just sowed some pole beans seeds in this container with some trellis support and they have just begun to emerge. More onions in this container. As you can see here, beautiful looking onions. And we have our hyacinth bean plant that's growing in this container with a Malabar spinach on the bottom. But this hyacinth bean plant has grown quite tall, quite well. And it's producing a lot of hyacinth beans as you see here. And this is almost a 7 foot plant now. We have our mint plant in the corner. Followed by fenugreek. And then we have peppers. The green peppers are producing quite well in this plant. Right next to that, we have the San Marzano tomato. It's an indeterminate tomato variety that's also growing quite well. We just planted some cucumbers. These are white cucumbers. And I'm really looking forward for these plants to grow quickly. We have the red or burgundy okra that's growing okay. We have about five plants in one whiskey barrel container. We have the black moon eggplant, followed by the snake goat plant. 
we have our juliet tomato plant that's a very prolific tomato it's producing a lot of tomatoes now and we have the eggplant again more eggplants we love eating eggplants so we are growing a lot of eggplants this season on the other side we have some carrots these are the cosmic purple carrots and not many other changes to the rest of the four containers as you see here they are pretty much the same as what you saw in the last month video but what you see as new here is our greenhouse we replaced our older greenhouse with the shiny new one and we got our greenhouse from home depot so just for transparency this wasn't sent to me this is not a sponsored review we bought this palram greenhouse from home depot this is the polycarbonate greenhouse and it's very sturdy and as you can see we haven't even used the greenhouse completely yet this is a 6 foot by 4 foot greenhouse which means it's a walk in greenhouse we have some temperature sensors inside and this also has an automatic vent opener which vents the greenhouse as needed and as you can see here pretty sturdy looking greenhouse and that completes the tour of our containers and let's look at our green stock planter now the green stock leaf planter has a lot of onions you can see all these beautiful onions growing we have 42 of these onions growing in this green stock planter large bulbing onions and you can see how easy it is to grow them so get yours today by going to greenstockgarden.com and use coupon code CAG to get 10 dollars off your order and now let's move on to our fruit tree tour so we are growing pluots this pluot tree is a 3 in 1 pluot tree and pluot is basically a plum and apricot combination and there are three varieties of these pluots grafted onto one tree which makes this plant very unique and you can see that the pluots are ripening now strawberry guava the strawberry guavas are growing quite well now as you can see here lots of guavas on this plant and they will ripen soon watermelon we have a few watermelon plants and we spotted a watermelon growing on one of them and as you can see here quite a beautiful looking watermelon that will grow large pretty soon and we have the parfianca pomegranate that's now producing our first pomegranate So it's been a couple of years so this is the time when most of the fruit trees will start producing and it's really exciting to see all these fruit trees producing fruits just like the little miss figgy fig tree that we bought from home depot beautiful looking tree it's almost like a patio tree easily grows in a container and produces a lot of figs and this is the little miss figgy tree it's a very interesting fig tree to grow at home We have the little gem mango. This tree produced about six mangoes last year, and it has two mangoes this year, which is perfectly normal because mango trees produce a little less mangoes every other year, which is called alternate bearing. And now let's look at some things for you to do in your garden this month. The first thing we did during this month was upgrading our greenhouse. Now you need to prepare your greenhouse now so that by the time it's the winter season your plants are well protected. And there are a few months to go yes, but if you're planning to build a greenhouse, this is a good time to build one. We got ours from Home Depot and I'll provide a link to this product in the video description. This is a polycarbonate greenhouse. It's a very sturdy greenhouse. made from very solid materials we bought this once again this product was not sent to us but we bought this from our home depot and it was a very good investment i think this greenhouse will last us for quite a long time it does take some time to assemble this greenhouse and it does take two people to assemble so just make sure that you have someone who can help you it's a little easier with two people assembling it and we are very happy with the quality of the greenhouse We haven't even used it completely, but it's of excellent quality, and hopefully, it will withstand all the Santa Ana winds that we see here. Saving seeds. 
we showed you how to save seeds like the spinach plant seeds by letting the seeds dry on the plant and then chop them off and store them and that way you can easily store seeds for your heirloom plants we also saved our radish seeds these are radish seeds they look very unique but this is the white daikon type radish that grows very large it's a very prolific variety which is why we have been saving seeds for this variety for the last few years don't miss our vipar spectra grow light giveaway coming up next week so there we have it folks that was our episode on the june episode for california gardening if you like this video do give us a thumbs up and if you have any questions or comments please post them in the comments box below we'll see you again soon happy gardening